Well, good morning, everyone. My name's Brian, and today is Thursday, April 11th, 2024, and this is episode 674 of the Lots Project podcast, and it's titled Put Them to Work. I'll be chatting about a new gig for our dogs, a spark that's been lit in my life, and a peek at the upcoming day, maybe a little bit of follow-up from yesterday. For that, let's grab a cup of coffee, head over into the live chat, see who's hanging out this morning, and say hello to the coffee crew. We'll pop over to all the feeds going on right now. We got YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, X, Noster. Um, What's this one over here? Where's this one going? Oh, Odyssey. Odyssey's still around. Odyssey's still around. Uh, But no, we got two feeds on uh, YouTube going to both the vertical and the landscape feeds. We got uh, Noster open in the other tab. Good morning over there in Noster world. And the morning crew here. Let's see who's here. Pip up early as always up early and into work. He posted a picture in the in the telegram show chat this morning of uh a little bit of a police response uh right there close to his workplace or was that actually at your workplace pip good morning anyway regardless um good to see you back at work but not good to see you back at work glad you're uh, um physically able to go in and i hope that's all good uh digger good morning how's it going rewilder life stopping in i appreciate it it's a latte morning. Oh, it's a latte coffee morning for me. <laughs> I've been in a kick on uh, on two presses for sure every day. <sighs> it's going to be a rough one to break for sure. I got in the habit when it was cold and uh, all I wanted to do was uh, like warm up after the dog walk. We'd go out and uh, go out and walk the dogs and I'd come back and all I wanted was uh, another French press of coffee and yeah, it just got me like laced in to uh, to that two French press a day, and I need to dial it back. I got, I really do um, for a couple reasons. But anyway, we'll get back at it. Cormac, good morning, good morning. I got your email yesterday about uh, about roundtables. I don't know how much I can add to the group, but I'd be up, I'd be, I'd be down for the right uh, right topic. I'd be down for a right topic. Rewilder Life says that's what decaf is for. No, I mean, yeah, yes, but also, you know, it's um, it's what self-control is for, too, I guess. <laughs> One of e decaf. Um, Brian, arms make decaf, um, from what I understand. I, um, I'm kind of in the boat. It's like drinking any beer. I did it for a long time, and then I realized it was pointless. Because the NA beer that you could get didn't taste like didn't taste like regular beer, and you didn't catch the buzz. So, meh. Um, the half calf coffee, I'm sure it tastes fantastic. I'm sure it tastes just as good as the uh, just as good as the other ones. But you know, in the back of my head, it's always NA beer. I guess I don't know. I just I sh- I just don't need to be drinking too uh, too. <laughs> French presses is the is what it comes down to for sure. Uh, good morning, Pickle Pete. Thanks for stopping in. Woof, I'm tired. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I um, I asked Corey this morning. I have this weird phenomenon going on right now where I'm um, routinely getting up to take a piss at uh, at like three o'clock, and I get up at five o'clock. Um, Pickle Pete says, but his decaf rocks. It does. He does the, he does, the, he has the Swiss water decaf instead of the uh, chemically decaffeinated, uh, decaffeinated beans. So much better, much better. And anything that Brian roasts is, is fantastic. He doesn't, he doesn't allow a bad product to go out his door. So there's that. But I've been getting up at like three in the morning to take a piss and um, like I'll get up, I'll wake up. And I'll be like, uh, oh, gotta take a piss. It happens as you get older, you know, hydrating more and whatever. And, uh, anyway, so I get up, 
and I, like I'm wide awake. Like I wake up, I'm like, oh, I gotta go to the bathroom. Yeah, all right. Um, I do that outside here. I don't. Uh, I don't waste using the composting toilet little jug or anything. If I don't pee in it, I don't have to empty it. So I um, I use the great outdoors. Got some biochar going right now. Uh, so yeah, you know, just wander outside and at three in the morning it's dark and there's nobody around. So I I, I pop out. Um, I pop outside. And I come back in and I lay down and I um, I can usually tell what time it is. I'm usually guessing it's it's like three, but I, I'll peek over at, at my phone screen and it'll be three o'clock and I'll be wide awake, just absolutely wide awake. Like I, sh I could get up and start my day. Um, I would. No, I wouldn't. Probably not. Uh, maybe. But um it's tough in the, in the camper with the, with the dogs and things. Um, if I like turn the lights on or pop my computer open or do anything, they really think it's time to get up and then they get Corey up. And that isn't a good thing. Not at three in the morning. Not good. She usually, she probably wakes up when I, when I go to the bathroom and I shut the door and stuff. So getting her up permanently at three in the morning would not be the best, uh, the best plan of action. But I lay back down and I go back to sleep. And then at five o'clock, it's like I can't even open my eyes. I, I, I'm so tired two hours later that I feel like uh, I want to sleep till noon. Two hours earlier, I could have got up and done jumping jacks out of bed. It's it's infuriating. Um. Pickle Pete says it rocks. If you love the taste, why not? Because, because then I sit here and have another French press of coffee instead of doing what I need to be doing. That's my personal reason. <laughs> um, Rewild their life says I didn't get up with Mr. Rachel the same time to get back in the swing. Yeah, you were gone for a while. You had a nice long trip. I'm glad the I'm glad all the drives went well. I'm glad there was no uh disasters with driving through the eclipse. Rachel had to um Rachel had to go back and forth. East Coast, Boston, Massachusetts, Boss Austin, Massachusetts, uh Boston area, maybe Salem. I, I, I don't know where you went uh, exactly, and that's none of our business. But uh, yeah, from uh, from Michigan all over to the East Coast and back, it was like, um, what, a weekend trip? Weekend trip, um, extended weekend trip. You were like, oh, we only have 22 hours to drive today or something. I'm like, oh, God, I remember that stuff. We don't do that anymore. <laughs> we definitely don't do that anymore. But I, I, I have gone on those treks, and uh, mm, not for me, not for me. That was a that is a young man's game. Um, you were gone a week. Holy crap! I didn't re. Man, I'm sorry. <laughs> I guess my week did fly by too. I uh, uh, with SRF and all of that thing coming, um, coming through the. Yeah, it was. Mm, yeah, it was. Uh, it was a week for sure, and and I'm also getting back into the swing of things, Rachel. So I feel you. We could do it. We could do it together. We could get back in it together because uh, I'm all out of whack between missing the two days of the weekend. Uh, when you do this stuff and you do kind of your own schedule, there is no Monday through Friday. I mean, there is. Corey works Monday through Friday, but I kind of spread my stuff out seven days a week. There's no point in having two days off when you can have two hours off whenever you want during the week so yeah oh rachel uh rewilder love says we took we took both the puppies it was a bit much um the pup's only eight months old it's but you have to you have to also mention the fact that it's a um, it's a e enormous eight-year-old toddler or eight-month-old toddler dog in that car for that long with an old is um is scout grumpy no scout and range scout and ranger i believe are her dog's name and and for right now i'm i'm um questioning myself which is the older one <laughs> is the older one grumpy 
does the older one like get to a point with the puppy and it's just like done and like rah, done and does the puppy listen <laughs> we uh we are going through some of that stuff uh with us here at uh at our house every once in a while <laughs> thanks for stopping in in the vertical feed drop uh drop a comment over there if you could and uh join in with the rest of the live we're gonna pop over here on Noster and let's talk about what's in the cup this morning good morning jim not dan good morning jim over on Noster. appreciate you stopping in and uh hanging out over there if you want to go do a little recruiting session on Noster, i uh I, I forgot to get over there in my morning routine and um and hit the hit the button um scouts for okay scouts the older ranger is the younger and uh scout is amazing he uh he seems pretty he seems pretty good he seems pretty good anyway what's in the cup this morning i've been sipping on this uh light colombian hector hectar the light colombian in my mouth every morning this week has been fantastic ah you can't be a nice, clean stream, air roasted Colombian, light roasted to perfection to its optimal light roasting spot by uh, Brian over at Food Forest Farms and sent to me monthly in my C4 membership. Can't beat the price, can't beat the quality, can't beat the customer service. And the customer service comes with so much more than coffee. It's unbelievable. You'll have to explore it for yourself. Head on over to foodforestfarms.com if you like good coffee. And, uh, yeah, pick some up today. Give it a try. Give it a try. You can uh, you can try it at a 10% discount off the already low, 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 low price um, for what it is for sure. Uh, and free shipping. You can get 10% off with LOTS10, L-O-T-S-10, over at foodforestfarms.com. Uh, Rachel says, Scout will really get after him so he listens. Funny, Scout is on the porch alone because... He needed space. <laughs> um, I, uh, yeah, our, uh, our oldest Walter can get in a mood sometimes. He's a loner. We got the, so we have three, if you don't know, if you happen to be swinging through and you've never seen the show, um, Hey K Bonk, thanks for stopping in on the on the vertical. Showed up in your shorts feed. Nice. I love showing up in your shorts, K Bonk. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Um the our dogs. So Walter. Walter is four. Man, going on four and a half, I think. Um he is a full blooded St. Bernard. Full-blooded St. Bernard, four years old. Ben, um, Ben, since we got him, Ben primed and propped and like he is, he is, um, he's a prima donna, I would say. He is very set in his ways. He wants things done when he wants them done. He wants to, um, he wants to lay where he wants to lay. He wants to be left alone when he wants to be left alone. Um, I get it. He's like the grumpy old man. He's like the old man. He's only four and a half, but he, and for a, and it hasn't been recently. He's been the guy, he's like Abe Simpson on the porch, screaming at the clouds randomly. He'll just be laying on the ground, grumbling to himself. Good morning, Hunter. Thanks for stopping over on Twitch. Um, grumbling. He growls in his sleep. He howls in his sleep. He uh, he plays every once in a while. Every great once in a while, we'll hear him getting into it. Not getting into it in a bad way, but playing with the with the other ones, with the the younger ones, and uh, it takes us by surprise because he is he is pretty much a loner pretty much hangs out by himself the two younger ones uh norman who is full saint bernard and then clyde who is a saint bernard great dane mix the great dane definitely came through in clyde if you've never had either breed which we hadn't um 
<laughs> Rewilder Life says he's every old man's spirit animal. I think he is. Like when he wants to play with the younger ones, it's like when the grandkids come over and grandpa gets all happy. You know, um, he's been senile for months on end. And then the grandkids show up and he's like lucid and wants to play. But if you've never had St. Bernard's or Great Danes, um, man, don't mix them together. First of all, <laughs> it's pretty, it's a pretty interesting combination. Uh, but, but St. Bernard's sleep like 18 plus hours a day. It's, it's unbelievable how much they sleep and how instantly they sleep. Like if I could sleep like these dogs, well, first of all, I wouldn't be productive at all because they're not awake enough, but they, um, they sleep all the time. The great Dane, on the other hand, he sleeps a lot. Like he probably sleeps more, a little more than the average dog. But when he is awake, he is a thousand miles an hour, like 1000 miles an hour, chewing on things, bouncing around, barking at things. And he does this thing where uh, he wants his brother, his twin brother that we call him. They don't look anything alike. They don't have the same mother. They have the same father and they were born on the same day. So we call them the twins. We got we got them the same day. Um. When he wants one of the other dogs to play with him, he'll bark. He'll like go in the back room and it, we can watch this happen. We'll be sitting out in the in the main room here and uh, watching a show or something and eating dinner, whatever. And Norman and Cla or Cla <laughs> Walter and Norman, the two St. Bernards will be laying with us and um, Clyde will come out and he'll like he'll have a toy in his mouth and he'll like peek his head out from the back bedroom like down the hall and like look you see him and he uh he'll like tap his toes like hey anybody listening and no one will do anything because though like i said the the 18 plus hour sleepers are like snoring away <coughs> and so he'll go back and he'll jump on the bed a little bit pounce around and play with his toy by himself for like a minute and then he'll either lay down and chew on a bone or tear apart and destroy a toy or whatever. Or, like, with all the windows closed, no sound whatsoever, no no prompting, he'll just bark a couple times. Like there's something outside. And the, the younger St. Bernard, well, the older St. Bernard will lift his head up and start barking. Well, maybe lift his head up. That's another thing he does. He literally will bark. Like as if he was barking at something outside without picking his head up the, off the ground to look, to move, nothing. Like he'll just bark. And um, so anyway, Clyde will be in the back. And he'll bark a few times and Norman will pick his head up and be all excited. Like what's going on? Like he wants to go bark at things. And so he runs out. He runs out. He runs in the back. And as he's going to the back, his brother like attack him. And then they're in the back wrestling and then they get more and more wound up. And you have to imagine like 140 pound and 180 pound toddlers wrestling in the back. Actually not toddlers. Let's, let's put them in the like high school wrestler category. Like we're having a high school wrestling match in the back of our camper. That's what it's like. And so Corey will yell at them because they don't listen to me. They don't give a shit what I say. Any of them any of them if mom is here i might as i might as well be that guy that like screams and nothing comes out or uh or or talks and is is like all of a sudden mute don't care they don't they don't even they don't even lift a lift an eyebrow when when i say anything but Corey will yell at them one will come by, back back here and lay down usually norman because he's tired already and then, um, and then Clyde, it'll start over again. And at some point we just let him do it till they're tired. And then he'll lay down and, and take a nap and it starts over again. But a few hours later, it, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Now I do feel bad because he needs to run. Like he needs to get the, have the zoomies out. Like he, that's what he needs. Um, he just needs to be left. Like we walk him and walk him and walk him. And it's never really, 
I don't think it has that burst of uh, energy to get him to get him uh, tired out. But yeah, wrestling in the back. Uh, Pip says, <laughs> Pip says he's an attention horse. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, Rewilder life uh, sounds like the Aussie side of Ranger. He's way more Aussie personality wise. Scout is more Burmese big dog personality. Oh, Clyde got 100% of the Great Dane, like, zoomies. When we got them, uh, and I'm going to talk about this in a second, is uh, Corey started doing social media for him and did Facebook for a long time, did Instagram for a long time. Um, we put videos of them on YouTube, and she messed around with TikTok. And so she followed other dogs' accounts on those platforms. And she got into some of the Great Dane ones when we were when we were gonna get Clyde and Corey. Who are the two Great Danes that run in the woods? Oh, I can't remember his name. Appa and Apollo or Appa. Appa. Yeah. So there's this there's this Great Dane. Um, Great Dane Corey follows, and the guy they're like in Finland or someplace. And so the owner takes them for a walk in the woods. And, and films it and puts it online. And the, the dog is absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. But literally, they walk through the woods and the dog is constantly just doing loops. <laughs> like running out, running around a tree and running back. Running up and, down, up and down a ridge, up the side of the hill and back. And like constantly running back and forth, like out and back, out and back, doing circles. And I'm like, yeah, that's Clyde. <laughs> that's Clyde for sure. Uh, hey, Jim, good morning over on YouTube also and Backwoods Butcher. Good morning. Good morning, Kyle. Thanks for uh, thanks for stopping in. I appreciate it as always. Thanks for being here. Um, so kind of on the on the social media front on that um, on that note, I guess. Uh, so Corey did that for a long time we had success uh especially when walter was a puppy like he was walter so he's super high maintenance not him well he is he's a prima donna but um he is he takes a lot of work he's very he he's got a fur he's got a winter coat on here in tennessee um like a, a thick thick like mountain winter coat he they are incredibly slobbery animals now the great dane that was a nice part of the great dane with clyde is he has short fur the great dane style fur um <laughs> a master yeah we'll call you the master when you have a a, a hundred thousand followers and you're making money how, how much money like Okay, Kyle, pause. We'll get back to Walter and his uh, prima donna miss in a second. Kyle uh, comes in here just uh, bowing up and saying, uh, was having fun coaching you through your live yesterday. Uh, so yesterday when I did laundry, I went live on uh, TikTok with a, with a product. He's made 20 bucks. I've made more than him. He, uh, he... He's, he was, uh, I, w I went live while I was waiting for the dryer to end sitting in the truck. I had a, I have a new, um, right here. Cool. I have a new, uh, O O B D M or O B D O B D two scanner scan tool for your truck, you know, truck car. I was, uh, I opened it up and was messing around with it. I was going live and, um, Kyle, stopped in and like i wasn't really prepared for it i actually was going to uh record uh record videos for some products instead of going live because it was really weird set up and awkward and then when i was sitting there um i was sitting there i was like ah, i'll just go live and, and mess around with it uh <laughs> chris dixon Chris Dixon in, uh, speaking of prima donnas, good morning, Kyle. 
Uh, anyway, I um, I decided to go live. Yeah, I only had like a half an hour. You're supposed to go, Kyle. Aren't you supposed to go uh, an hour or more on TikTok to uh, to to kind of let it get rolling? I only had a half hour, but I wanted to fire this thing up, so I figured I'll just hold the phone and mess around with this uh, scan tool. Good morning, Canadian Farmstead. Thanks for stopping in. Um, and so I uh, I start I go live. I'm sitting there, and I, I was talking about something, and then I was thinking about something, and then I was just playing with buttons. I, I really didn't know have anything much more to say. It's a pretty simple, straightforward product. Um, and so I was trying to come up with some interesting stuff to say. Kyle pops in. And I appreciate it. And uh, he starts hitting the like and he he starts commenting. And he's like, talk about what you're doing. And it like literally wasn't doing anything. I was like, like just hitting the button on the thing, scrolling through the menus. And he was coaching me through the live. He's like, look who's look who's teaching who now. <laughs> Um, and so I'm sitting there and, and I appreciate it. Like I've just busted his balls and everything, but now he's over here peacocking around saying that the, the master has become the student. I help Kyle. And, and, and that's weird. He calls me that because I, like, I am far from an authority on any of this shit. Uh, but I do try to give him, uh, tips and tricks in here that I have picked up along the way. He's over here telling me the masters become the teacher, the student become the teacher and all this shit. I, I, I am all the way up to like $29 in revenue from TikTok. And, uh, I just found out that, that the master, the master has made a whole 20 bucks. <laughs> Backwards says he's just messed. I know. And I'm just busting your balls too, my man. I, uh, I told Corey the other day, I think it was Corey. Pretty sure it was Corey. I was talking to I said, um, I got to make something of this TikTok shop thing and TikTok affiliate thing just so I can make Kyle do it. And the only way he'll ever listen to me is if I show him my earnings. He wants to use his, uh, it, it, it is a big decision. It is a big decision to go to a commercial account, to go to a business account over there because you lose access to a lot of the um a lot of the sounds and a lot of the the little things that he likes to do to get uh to get attention over there <laughs> but um if i can uh if i can if i can make some ching and show him that it's possible i'll show him Oh, Pip says I found five dollars in my jeans while looking for my phone. <laughs> that's I mean that's that's a solid score, man. Um, yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, everybody go follow Kyle over the Backwoods Butcher over on TikTok if you're not already. He uh, he puts out some interesting things. See, he's he's more in tune with the uh, with the TikTok culture, with the TikTok uh, trends and things like that. Hey, good morning, Hunter08. I'm doing good. How are you doing? Glad for glad you stopped by on that vertical feed over on uh, on the YouTubes. Uh, he's more in tune with the with the the trends and things. Like I learn, hey, the Dan. Thanks for the 121 zap over on Noster. Appreciate it. Um, I look at Kyle's TikToks and and figure out what stupid trend is going on because he stays on top of it. Um, my TikTok now is transitioning into, um, affiliate stuff and figuring out how to grow that. So two different paths, two different paths, same end, because I'm going to end up getting Kyle to uh, make money on TikTok instead of worrying about how many followers he has. He's going to worry about how, uh, how big that, uh, that payout account is. Kyle says the the his video he's got over a hundred thousand views right now is he's literally calling himself dumb. So you're being truthful. Thanks, Hunter. Hunter says that's because Kyle is young. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so back to the dogs. Walter um 
Walter is like our, um, yeah, he, he's something. He's something. He um, he drools a lot when he gets hot. Um, he consumes a shitload of water. The slobber things you hear about St. Bernard's, like if you've watched Beethoven. Now, I don't, I don't, hey, by the way, Kyle, did you watch that video yet? Um, I don't know if you've watched Beethoven. It's been a long time. There's been like 15 of them, I'm pretty sure. But if you watch the original Beethoven, I never did. If I had, Corey, I think Corey, Corey must have like played out the fact and figured out if I had seen the movie or not before she had St. Bernard. Before we decided, she must have, because it was just this past year, I think, that I finally watched it. And, um, <laughs> I finally watched it. I watched it, and there is no way I would have gotten a St. Bernard. No way. Nope. Everything that they show in that movie is not an exaggeration. The mud, the drool, the fur, the all of it. The love. That's true. I am that father in that movie that literally wants to kill that dog every moment of the day until they look at you with that face and then you do anything to keep him anything he's disgusting beyond belief the things i have to deal with him are things that i wouldn't ask people to deal with ever um they're constantly destroying my stuff. They're constantly uh, making everything dirty and disgusting. Um, but man, when they come and they they press up against you with their side and they look at you, <laughs> they'll love you more than anything. I, I it, It's unbelievable. So it's definitely the love-hate relationship. It's definitely, definitely the love-hate relationship. <laughs> Kyle says that in the second one, he saves the daughter from getting graped. Yep, sure does. That's their good like that. <laughs> now, I would never want to see him go after any animal or person. Um, That scares me. Any of the three of them really scares me. I don't think they would. Um, I don't think they would. And that was the same with our, our German Shepherd we had before them. He would have never, never attacked anyone unless it was absolutely called for and necessary. Uh, but I never wanted him, a uh, person or animal, I never wanted to see it. Because at 100 and I think Walter was, we, we figured it was 160-ish, 160 plus pounds. I will grab him, open his mouth, pull his mouth open, put my hand in his mouth, put my face in his face, um, blow on his nose, uh, pull on his cheeks. Like, he doesn't care. But I understand that if he wanted to break my arm by biting it, it would happen in a second. If he wanted to tear me apart in my sleep, it would happen. I don't want to see that. I don't want I don't want to taint my uh, my image of him. Yes, Kyle, I said taint. <laughs> but yeah, that's Walter. The puppies are puppies. They're not puppies anymore, but they act like it still. I don't know how. Um, I don't know how they act like puppies still, but they still do. Anyway, when we got Walter, he was beautiful, um, and we had one. And he was easy to take care of. He was a lot smaller. He didn't have as much to to uh, to to groom, to take care of, to uh, make pretty all the time. And Corey took pictures of him all the time. We were on the farm, took pictures and video. They were playing in the yard. We had a, a acre fenced in. So she started doing social media for him. Um, and he got a following. He had a decent following. I was never able to figure out how to monetize it. That was always my problem. Corey was very good at 
getting followers, engaging followers. But at some point, it it wasn't worth it because there was nothing coming in. She enjoyed taking pictures of the dogs when they had stuff to do. When we were going on walks through the woods and when we were doing things like that. Um, when we were traveling even. When we were in Texas, we were able to do a ton of content. But as I was talking about yesterday, this, this whole last year has been kind of a, a clusterfuck for us. Um, one has been our dogs. I feel bad about it, but our dogs have walked down this, this shitty County road over and over and over and over. Um, they haven't got to go on a bunch of adventures, a daily adventure. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to star that one, Chris, for sure. Um, so the content's been light. It's been uh, difficult to come up with new things. I, I really, I really applaud her effort for what she's done. Um, it's been easier to come up with short format content um, and get away from the long written posts like on Facebook and, um, and Instagram. So we've gone, um, we've gone to uh, TikTok and YouTube Shorts for them, and it's it's going all right. But it. Uh, we never have been able to monetize it. I guess uh, roundabout, we've been able to monetize it through uh, YouTube because we gain subscribers and subscribers mean watch hours and yeah, yeah, yeah. But not enough, not enough for the work. Um, so we have come up with a job for them. I have come up with a job for them. And it's 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 kind of funny because I told Corey, if they start making money, I can't hate them. I have to like them. <laughs> I love them to death, but I'll have to like them too. Uh, but their new job, as uh, as I've been poking around at products, and I started diving more into products and uh, and trying to marry Amazon products with TikTok products and and get a dual purpose out of these things and and reaching out to companies and requesting products, I found some dog companies, and I've got some products to show up. So we're going to put the damn dogs to work. We're going to uh, we're going to start doing videos. We're going to start doing lives. We're going to try to make some money with these damn dogs again. And this time I'm hoping we succeed better than last time. So what we got going right now is um, I got in the mail. I got uh, I got some new shampoo. I got uh, a new brush. I got a treat pouch, like a, it's like a fanny pack, a really, really nice fanny pack, leather, nice fanny pack for holding treats. Won't work for our dogs because if as soon as they know there's treats in them, they'll slobber the shit out of it and it'll be disgusting. Uh, and then calming shoes, some doggy, some doggy, uh, some doggy dosing. And so, uh, yeah, we're going to start doing live uh, live videos of uh, washing them, uh, possibly grooming them and things like that. We're going to do it on TikTok and sell the products that, uh, that we're using. So path to monetization for the dogs. They got a new job. It's been a long time. Like I said, Walter's four years old. We've been, we've been dicking around with... Um, um, dicking around with um dog uh, dog stuff for four years and haven't really uh haven't really dialed it in but hopefully hopefully this is it i mean when you scroll through the they're they're definitely a draw when you scroll through and you see that saint bernard you're always like oh i wonder what that fluffy thing's doing or maybe that's just me good morning blakesley acres thanks for popping in appreciate it and uh thanks for uh, the people hanging out over on the vertical feed, you can join us on the, the main YouTube channel. Just hit that subscribe, head on over to the channel. And, uh, we got a morning show rolling with a big crew of people in the, in the group. Um, Hey, Jim, not Dan. Thanks for that 500 zap. Appreciate that. And, uh, looks like my zap stream balance is low. I'll have to top that off, uh, top that off tomorrow. So, <laughs> so chris dixon chris dixon's got a couple comments i ain't gonna get back to here this one is timely for sure uh said someone sent me a tactical style dog harness i was excited till it came and it doesn't even fit the cat well that is the struggle so 
it took a long time to really figure out what products I could request that would uh, make sense because all the harnesses, all the leashes, all the collars, all the bandanas, that was the big thing when Corey started with Walter on Instagram was they all wanted to send us bandanas for them to wear. They never weren't big enough or the dog clothes, like the cutesy um, pocket dog clothes and those things. Those were what we're selling. Um, I can never wrap my head around the products. We buy specialty shit all the time for these guys because they're so big. Like I had a coworker make them a leather collar because we couldn't find anything nice that was that big. Um, I was talking to Becky at uh, Becky Cook at, at SRF and they have chihuahuas and we had paracord bracelets for sale. And she's like, these would make perfect collars. Like, I don't know if that paracord bracelet would fit around Walter's wrist. Like his paw, like above his paw. And she wants them for collars. And actually, actually, uh, they're wondering if they need to be smaller. They're going to get us a measurement. They might need to be smaller. This is what we're dealing with. <coughs> so, yeah, the, the the finding the products. But the brush is obviously a home run um, if it works. I, I, I would definitely be reaching out to several. I'll definitely, if this goes well, I don't think I'll have to reach out we'll be doing business with brush companies because that, I mean, that's all they are is hair. Um, the, the shampoo I'm interested in because who doesn't like to watch a dog, like, uh, get a bath, <laughs> uh, up here before Chris, uh, Chris Dixon says this, and this is something that Corey and I are wholly aware of. And we're, mm, we're preparing ourselves for, um, figuring things out and um, both emotionally, physically, and having a plan for. But Chris says, uh, the problem with big dogs is eventually they get old and crippled and no one can move them. Yeah. And we know probably one of ours is going to be sooner rather than later, unfortunately. Um, yeah. So it, uh, it is, it's, um, it's something I think about a lot and it's something that I've thought about a lot with the, the travel trailer and the truck and um, having to use the ramps to get into the travel trailer as opposed to being like on a, on grade with uh with a, a cabin or a house or a porch, something that they can get into easier something that I can get them into easier. Now we did intentionally buy a, um, a cart, a collapsible cart that we have with us that um, holds up to 300 pounds, holds up to 300 pounds and um, can get them in. You can get them, I can get him into it. Well, Corey and I would be able to get him into it um, and get him anywhere he needed to be in the short term, but figuring out how to get him in and out of the camper in and out of the truck as he gets older is going to be tough. And he's mine. Um, you know how dogs pick people. Norman has definitely picked me. So that's going to be my cross to bear. I think Corey loves him to death and, and Corey enjoys her time with him, but, um, he is definitely my dog. Um, yeah, it's it's blatantly obvious. I didn't choose him. He didn't. Ch he chose me for sure. Um, but he is the. He's going to be the medical disaster, and um, I think we're going to have to make some really hard decisions with him. And I'm already preparing myself for that. And I don't even know. It might be a couple years. Who knows? But already already dreading that moment because um he definitely is my dog my dog but that's the dog's new job we're uh we were waiting till after srf to get it done uh to get it try to figure it out we're going to have to oh getting all glitchy awesome i gotta get starlink fixed guys um the, the leaves are literally coming in i i popped open my uh my obstruction map on my starlink and it is like starting the leaves are coming in i can see them coming in along the edge and progressing so i gotta figure that out um maybe i'll reach out to a company Corey suggested reaching out to a company to uh to get an extender pole <laughs> see if they'll send one out for me to test because i've obviously know um what happens when the leaves come in and i can tell them if it's working or not 
Um, so yeah, that's their new job. We were going to wait till after SRF to get it done, get it figured out, start doing it. Um, Dixon says I should call Elon. Yeah, maybe, maybe, but, um, it's been pouring rain. It's been pouring rain. Cormac said goodbye to his two labs a few months ago. Strange without them around. Dude, I'm sorry. That that sucks. Like, literally, I get more tore up about animal deaths than I do um, human deaths, mostly. <laughs> it, it's kind of, it's kind of weird. Um, it is what it is, I guess. But it's been raining. I'm not washing this dog in the camper. I will tell you. I will guarantee you. And I really don't even like to brush them in here because, like, one stroke of the brush and you got a pile of hair. We've literally taken um, whole dogs off of him in a matter of minutes. Like the pile of fur sitting next to him that we get off him when we when we brush him is like a whole nother dog. Like that. Uh, we have videos from the farm where Corey was brushing them out in the yard. And when you, um, when you look around, it's just like pile, pile. And then the wind will start blowing away. Corey mentioned that, uh, our, our birds had the nicest, most insulated bird or bird nests in the world, um, around our farm. And all of them were like woven with dog fur. So it's supposed to go rain again today, but going into the weekend, I think we're going to have a lot of time. I think we have a finally two days in a row where we're not doing anything. We're not running around. We're not going, um, going to be gone all day. I shouldn't say that. Um, it'll be another weekend. We got a lot of time free, but I'm going to go hang out with uh, Toolman Tim as he uh, when he gets back here and, uh, and, and hang out at the property and do some work out there. Um. But yeah, we're going to get some time to mess around with how we want to do these lives, how we want to set them up, um, how to get everything aligned and, and worked. And it's going to be a team effort. I think it's going to be Corey is going to be going to town, doing her doing her thing, washing Walter, grooming him. Um, and I'm going to be running the live, uh, interacting with comments and questions and things like that. So, yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, it'll be interesting. Uh, I'm interested to see how it goes. I'm interested to see how it goes. We'll get there. We'll figure it out. So that's their new job. That's their new job. Shampoo, brushes, um, treat bag. Oh, and the, the calming shoes. Those are for Clyde. Like, I seriously, seriously can't imagine giving any of those to Norman or Walter. Be, first of all, we wouldn't be able to evaluate if they work. Like, how are they going to sleep more? How would we even tell? Um, sometimes we have to get them up to take them out, like wake them up to take them outside. Sometimes they, uh, when it's their turn to go out, they like lay there and they watch. Won't even lift their head up. Just lay there and watch until the very last minute when it's their turn. And then they get up and like wander over to the door. Like, oh. <laughs> you're bothering me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so that's cool. That's cool. Good morning, John Palmer. Thanks for swinging in. Appreciate it, as always. Um, yeah, so that's the dogs. That's uh, that's their new role in uh, in our our household here. Start bringing in some uh, br start bringing in some money instead of uh, it all going out the door. Because man, they eat a lot. They eat a lot. That's another thing about when they're that big. Um. Rewilder Life says, we gave the dog CBD, Benadryl, calming shoes. Yeah, does not fight testosterone when the daughter's dog was at the end of eat. Whoo, <laughs> that could be fun. Uh, the other thing is uh, we were looking at the container of dog calming shoes we got in the mail uh, from the company. And it, we were looking at the dosing instructions. Why do dosing instructions for dog dog uh products always stop at 90 i guess frontline goes to 120 when we were putting frontline on the dogs for the first time when they got bigger when they got bigger than 120 pounds we we had to get a hold of the company and say well does it work pound for pound like 
if our dog's 180 pounds, do we take a 120 pound dose and a 60 pound dose and do both of them? They're like, exactly. That's exactly what you do. <laughs> so we have to add the things together. We were looking at the, um, we were looking at the dog chews and it, and it topped out at, at 90 pounds. And I think that was like five chews. So Clyde at 140, 145 pounds, we're going to have to give him like seven of these things. He's he's going to think he's the best dog ever. He's going to get seven treats and then he's going to take a nap. <laughs> and to do anything, you're probably going to have to give him like 10. Well, there says normally the common shoes work great. Yeah, if I don't have to give him a handful. He's going to get sick of eating them before he takes a nap. <coughs> oh, man. Uh, if you guys caught the show yesterday, I uh, I got into it a little bit about um, where we're at. Some realizations that we had and the fact that um, sitting here has been really hard. Sitting here has been hard. Um, camper space camper space was uh very acceptable and the plan was it was acceptable when we were moving the plan was we um uh, pickle piece says uh he can make cbd dog treats in a blink any dose yeah i know um but you don't pay me a commission when i sell yours on tiktok <laughs> direct order through tiktok all i do is make a video they offered to send the chews. I requested the treat bag. They offered to send the chews. So I know you got treats. We don't need to dose the dog with CBD treats. Uh, but if anybody else is looking for them, that's another thing you can uh, contact Brian through foodforestfarms.com uh, and check those out. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah been contemplating a lot. Corey and I got uh, some decisions we're, we're making in the process of making and um, can't really talk about things yet, but soon, soon be able to talk about things. Um, it, um, it, uh, it's exciting. We, we have started to make some decisions. We have started to put some things together and I'm excited. We have followed our, we have followed our goals. Like we have followed our plan. We set out a plan uh, to travel around, to find that home base, to, to get acclimated, to sit for a year, to really, to really evaluate that first property, that home base, that one we can always go back to. And we're there and we're finding that property. We're looking at different options. We're considering different options. But one thing I didn't talk about yesterday is I'm out of shape. <laughs> I'm out of shape mentally a little bit, physically a lot of it, um, motivation wise, energy level, all of it. Sitting here for the last year, and traveling for the year and a half, or like the, since we left Minnesota, since we left the farm, I've slowly kind of lost that edge. It has to do with age. It has to do with a lot of things, but I've realized it. I've recognized it and, I'm, and I need to address it. And as we're making these decisions moving forward, um, we're having to make some some gut calls. And we're having to make some decisions that we're going to do some things that probably aren't the easiest. Um, but that's never been our way anyway. And I've come to I've come to a point, and Chris Dixon says this. Getting started with a new purpose will will fix that quickly. And that's it, man we do have the purpose like I, I i'm not i'm not talking about it yet but there there's a lot more solidified than i've than i've than i've told you guys and that's just because it's not done but i know what is coming i know what's in store and 
it's a challenge. It is a huge, huge challenge. And I've realized in the last couple of days, and I told Corey yesterday, I said, I need to be in the best shape of my life to do this. So why the fuck not do it? Like if I've recognized that I need to be in shape, that if I recognize that it's going to take a lot of physical work, a lot of uh, a lot of mental work that I'm going to want to be tired. I'm not go- I'm going to be tired at the end of the night, every night. Um, if I've recognized that and I have time to start addressing it, there's no reason why it can't be done. Not at all. If I know going into it that it's going to be hard and I accept that and I accept that as a challenge. Then the only person that can stop me from doing it is me. So fuck it. That's what I'm going to do. I plan to be in the best shape of my life in the next couple of years. At the end of the next phase of what we're doing. I'm hoping to be on fire. I'm hoping to be just like, that's the goal. And if we accomplish what we're, we're, we're going to task ourselves with, it won't be a question of if it'll be a question of when I'm in that condition. So screw it. I might as well start now. Uh, Corey, uh, I, I said it to Corey and she looked at me. And she goes, yeah, I get it. I get it. Uh, and if I want to help you, I'm going to have to do the same thing. Uh, so it was basically like a switch went off for both of us. And like Chris says, now that there's a focus, now that there is a challenge and a mighty challenge at that, and it's it, and we... We absolutely, um, <laughs> Chris Dixon, Chris Dixon says it, uh, the greatest plan ever. Fuck it. <laughs> um, Corey and I have never done anything easy. Jim says he heard an eye of the tiger starting to play. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Corey and I have never done anything the easy way. For sure. Nothing comfortable, nothing easy, always um, outside the system. <laughs> since we've been, since we've met each other, um, we've done things different. And I'm okay with that. We've done things hard, the hard way. Uh, the first two years on a farm, we didn't have any equipment. No, no, well, I guess we bought a riding lawnmower. We didn't have four wheeler. We didn't have any equipment. Um, thirty five acres, and and man, man, we knocked it out of the park. It sucked. It was a lot of work. It was a lot of work, but we made it happen, and we consciously made those decisions to make it happen. So here we are again in a transition. And we're looking at a we're looking at a project that has some things that aren't ideal, that has some things that um, are against us, that has some things that we could probably take care of by do going a different direction. But the positives for this option were so great. And the fact that we can challenge ourselves now and when we accomplish it, and yes, when we accomplish it, it's going to be so much sweeter. So fuck it. Let's do it. Let's do it. (laughs) It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be, I'm going to be tired when I lay down to go to bed at night, which is fantastic. I'll probably be awake a lot more than I am now, but higher energy. Um, so putting together just total life change, it wasn't intentional that we got into the, I don't want to say we're in a rut, but we kind of are like, we're in, we're going through the motions. It was the plan to sit. It wasn't the plan to go through the motions. 
but situations are situations and where we're at is where we're at. And, and we dealt with what we, what we had to do. Now we get to make the choices and set the path and uh, work the plan. So it's going to be fun. I hope you guys are going to enjoy watching and, and, and rolling along. Things will change. I think, I don't think this will change much. The show will still be here. Uh, I'm not going away from that, but I, I think a lot of stuff will change. A lot of stuff will change in my daily life, my my hour to hour, my day to day, um, my yeah, my focus, uh, intensity, and energy. Hopefully, all on the rise soon. It's gonna be fun, guys. I, uh, I I'm excited. I'm excited. I I have a fire lit under me right now. When I made those realizations that I can choose to do it harder, and I can choose to just just do it to just to just get it done regardless of uh regardless of how hard it is so it's not impossible by any means i'm gonna stop limiting myself by saying that uh, i don't know <laughs> we'll get there we'll get there anyway we're up in an hour here uh appreciate everybody coming in uh all everybody that was in on the vertical feed everybody that was in here on the normal feeds on youtube facebook twitch twitter x all of that stuff um uh, Rewild Her Life, I appreciate it. She says she's excited for us, and we're really enjoying watching your journey. It's gonna get, uh, it's gonna get wild. <laughs> um, I was, I was contemplating some things last night when I laid down, and um, looking back at Corey and our adventures, and uh, from everything from buying our first house to, to the farm to the camper to this whole thing has been just an absolute roller coaster ride that I would never give up. But there's this weird thing that happens with Corey and I and things line up and there's signs and I don't go too deep down that rabbit hole of uh, meant to be and blah, blah, blah. And all that, like, man, like I'm pretty sure that we, we make our choices. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe not. But there's this weird phenomenon that happens with Corey and I that when we start looking at making decisions, things line up for us. And then they're, they're not always necessarily obvious. And, and sometimes we see them in retrospect. But a lot of the times we see them up front and we recognize them um, quick real quick before i get out I, I know i'm over an hour here and and pickle pete's waiting to uh waiting to do his thing but um when we bought our first house Corey and i were hell-bent and getting out of an apartment we we're getting ready to buy a house and um we couldn't afford it really i mean like in all honesty we shouldn't we shouldn't have been buying a house <laughs> by any means we should have been saving money or doing something else <laughs> but that's what we wanted to do. And I'm glad we did it. But the first thing we put a, 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 a offer in on was a short sale. People were underwater. This was about that time. I can't, oh man, what year was it? I can't like 2010 ish. Maybe we put an offer in on a short sale house. Uh, it was a disaster. The thing was uh, it, fixer upper would have, it was an understatement. Um, but it was livable to move into. It would have been miserable, but livable. Uh, we put the offer in, we put in a, a lower offer and it was a short sale. And the realtor was like, it, it could be months before the bank gets back to you. And so we waited and waited and we kept looking and the realtor said, well, you might want to keep looking because if anybody puts an offer in over yours, blah, 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 all of this, it, it you just won't, it won't go through. And so we looked and the offer never heard back, never heard back. We found another house and we absolutely made a, a killing on this house. We got it in a foreclosure and there was nothing wrong with it except a, a broke, a busted valve that dropped the price by like $30,000. We flipped it in a couple of years, but we found this in the waiting time when the other sale didn't go through. And there were so many other weird confluences at that time that, um, it, it was one of those, uh, that house wasn't going to, we were never going to buy that first house. It wasn't the right one for us. We've also fallen into all sorts of like, just random um, flows of, uh, of, of this is what needs to happen and points you in the right direction. 
And we're seeing that kind of stuff again here in the last uh, few weeks revolving around some major decisions. So we're excited because usually when we recognize this, usually when we're both seeing it and we talk and, and how it, how it starts is I'll, I'll start noticing things and she'll start noticing things. And then w one of us will be like, Holy crap, I need to say something. And the other one's like, uh, yeah, yeah. I was getting ready to say something too. <laughs> Makes it fun guys. Especially when you got someone like uh, like I do that you can share it with. So, exciting. Um, Rewild Their Life says, I get it. 33 years with this guy and we're, we're a force together. You got it, man. You got it. Pip says, ask your doctor if getting off your ass is right for you. That's what I'm going to do. Get up and get moving and make it happen. We know the goal. We know the prize. And uh, all we got to do is do it. All you got to do is do it. So. Anyway, guys, like I said, I appreciate everyone listening. If you enjoyed the show, it's always free to hit that like, share, and subscribe. To return value for value, please consider joining one of the YouTube membership tiers or listening on any value for value platform like Noster Live, where you can zappity zap zap. Thanks for the zaps, guys. Thanks, Jim, for stopping in, as always, and all the other Noster folks that swung through. Uh, you can also listen on, uh, after the fact, listen to the audio on Podverse or Fountain.fm. You can also visit thelotsproject.com or comfreyroots.com to pick up products that support us. You can also find at lotsproject.com. You can find partner companies, discount codes, and all the likes there. There's a shit ton of information uh, over at thelotsproject.com. If you ever have a few minutes, you're just bored, go meander through my stuff and check it out. Otherwise, uh, guys, share it with somebody you know. That is uh, that is the best way to grow this show is to grab the link and share it with somebody you think that would like it. It's going to get fun, guys. It's going to get fun for sure. It's Thursday. All you got to do is make it through today. And we have Friday on the horizon. Friday, Friday, Friday. It's going to be fun weekend. We're going to roll through it. Tomorrow, let's talk. Uh, some conspiracy theories. I'm going to have to dig deep now that the eclipse is over and the giants didn't come. But no worries. Here come the cicadas. Hey, guys, we'll talk to you tomorrow. I can see the light. I can feel the sun.